Welcome to another Onshape tutorial on creating the Bluetooth speaker cases. In this tutorial, uh, we're going to look at some different tools. It's perhaps a, a medium difficulty tutorial. Uh, so you may want to have had a go at the cube or the cylinder speaker uh, cases first so that uh, you're familiar with the tools that we're going to use uh, and you've had a bit of practice with the software first. Uh, so you can see the previous files in the folder that I'm already in, my Bluetooth speaker folder. I'm going to left click on create, left click on document and this time I'm going to call it oval speaker, hit enter and we'll go into the design screen of the software. I'm going to create this on the front work plane, so that's where we're going to put our first sketch. So I'm going to move the mouse so it highlights the front work plane, right click, and then select new sketch with the left mouse button. And again, I can either right click and go view normal to sketch plane, or I can press the N key on the keyboard so that we're viewing uh, flat onto the work plane as if it's a piece of paper on our desk. So we're going to start off uh, a little way away from the origin. If you followed the last two tutorials, we started with the origin. We've got a slightly different shape this time. Um, although it's symmetrical, it's actually easier for us to draw it in a slightly different way. So I'm going to start off with a center circle. So center point circle, left click to select it. I'm going to go over to the origin and then I'm going to hover across to the left and hopefully you can see on the screen that there's like an orange dotted line going to the pointer and you can also see hopefully that that orange line is lining up not just with the origin but it's lining up with the edge of the top work plane. I'm going to left click to put the center point of the circle in, drag it out and left click again and I'm now going to dimension both the distance of the circle from the origin and the diameter of the circle. So I'm going to use the dimension tool, so left click on the dimension tool. I'm going to, I could left click on the origin or I could left click on the edge of the right work plane and left click on the center of the circle and I'm just going to move that up and click and ch type in 50 millimeters. So that's the distance I want the center of the circle to be away. I'm then going to left click on the circle and left click over here and change that to uh, 100. So you can see that the circle actually just touches the origin, but we're not going to use all of the circle. I'm now going to use the line tool. So I'm going to select the left line tool by left clicking. I'm going to hover over the center of the circle come down to the bottom so I'm away from the dimension at the top just to save any confusion and as the edge of the circle is highlighted in orange I'm going to left click to start my line but I'm going to left click and hold so I'm left clicking and holding and then I'm dragging the line out notice if I come down a bit or up a bit the line changes there's no longer kind of an orange dotted line with the line I'm drawing and it also stops highlighting the circle and I'm going to come to the point where I'm lining up with the origin so again if I go away if I go back the origin highlights in orange and there's also a dotted line from the origin down to the end of this line I'm now going to let go um, but you'll see just before I let go that just down and to the right of where I've got my mouse pointer is a little icon that uh, looks maybe like a, a seesaw, like a wooden plank over a log. Um, it's a tangent symbol showing that this line is coming away from the circle at a tangent. So I'm going to let go and you can see that that line is fully defined. So by fully defined, the circle and the line are both black. The circle is fully defined because we know where the centre position is. We know it's uh, 50 millimeters away from the origin, lining up with the origin, and we know the diameter of the circle, it's 100 millimeters. So that's set in stone, we can't move it around. And we know that this line is also fully defined because the length is governed by the distance because it's stuck to the circle and it's stuck to the edge of the uh, right work plane, uh, and also lining up with the orange, the origin. Uh, I'm now going to uh, create a copy of this line. 
So I'm going to use the mirror tool. Now if you've followed any of the other tutorials, we've used the mirror feature tool. We're going to use the mirror sketch entity tool this time. So I'm going to click on the mirror tool. And it tells me what to do. I need to select a mirror line. Well, I'm going to select the edge of the top plane. Left click on it and you see it goes yellow. And then select the entities to be mirrored. The only line I want to mirror is this one. So I'm going to left click on that. And you can see that I've now got a top line, a bottom line, and a circle. Well, I don't want the whole circle. The rule of every sketch is there should only be two points, two lines ever coming away from a point. So this point here, I've got a line going to the left, a line going to the right in terms of the circle, but I've also got another line going to the right in terms of the straight line. So I'm going to use the scissor tool, and I'm going to trim out this part of the circle. So I now, having trimmed that out, follow the rule. I've, from this point, I've got a straight line going to the right, and I've got a circle going off to the left, or a half circle going off to the left. This is one half of the outside shape of the speaker. What I want is the same over here. So again, I'm going to use the mirror tool. So select the mirror tool, select a mirror line. This time, it's going to be the edge of the right work plane. And I'm going to select all the lines I want to mirror. So that horizontal line, the curve, and the bottom horizontal line. And I've now got a complete sketch. I don't know if you noticed, but it's the, the software shaded this in a light gray once the sketch was completed. Now, this would be OK for the end plate of the speaker, but I want to create the middle part of the speaker. So I want to create a contour inside of here. So I'm now going to use the contour tool. So I'm going to left click on the offset tool the one I think looks a bit like Mr. Greedy. And I'm going to left click on all of the lines that make up my sketch outline. I actually want this to be on the inside. So having gone around and selected all of those lines, I'm going to hover over the arrow. I'm going to hold the left mouse button down on the arrow and I'm going to drag inside. I'm going to let go. I'm going to press return or enter on the keyboard. I'm going to type in the number six and press enter again on the keyboard. So I've now got a six millimeter wall thickness to this shape. If I hold the right mouse button down and turn that around, you can see the shape I've got. I'm now going to extrude this and I'm going to extrude this 58 millimeters. So I'm gonna use the extrude tool. I'm gonna to change the dimension to 58 hit enter and I'll get a preview and you can see that it's gone in one direction from the work plane I want this to be symmetric about the work plane so I'm going to left click in the symmetric uh, checkbox uh, that looks good it's gone either way so 58 millimeters uh, so I've gone 29 millimeters in each direction effectively left click to say I'm happy with that and I've got that first part of the shape Let's now draw the front onto this uh, speaker. So I'm going to just zoom in a little bit by using the scroll wheel on the mouse. I can use that to zoom in and out. I'm going to hover over the, that edge, so make sure that both the outside and inner edges are highlighted. So I know I'm on that front face. Right click, left click on New Sketch, and then press N to go Normal and I'm going to use the conversion tool, convert entity tool, to select the outside edges to create the face that's going to go on here. So this is the uh, project or convert tool, left click on it. I'm going to pick that arc, left click on it, make sure it has actually selected it so it will go a darker, uh, thicker line. Same on this line same on that circle and same on this one at the bottom so hopefully you can see I've got a full sketch now with those edges highlighted I'm now going to extrude that shape so left click on extrude it's defaulted to 25 millimeters I want to change that to six millimeters hit enter and click the tick and it's now filled that in if I turn it around you'll see that it's still hollow. Now we want to create a, a face on the back as well so let's use the mirror tool. 
Left click on mirror. This time we're not mirroring sketch entities. We're going to mirror the feature that we've just done. So left click on part mirror, change that to feature mirror. The feature that we're going to mirror is extrude two. And the mirror plane, left click in the box. If we spin that around, we can see that we want the front plane. So left click on the front plane. And that's drawn that in so we can left click to confirm that. If I now right click in space and left click on isometric, that brings it around. So this is our basic shape for our uh, speaker casing, but we haven't got the holes for the speakers to come out of. So we need to create another sketch for that. So let's hover over the, the what is effectively the front face of our box now. Right click, left click on new sketch and press N so that we are facing normal to our face that we want to draw on. I'm going to use the uh, center circle tool. So center point circle. Now if I hover over the edge, okay, you can see that it highlights it. If I hover over an end point, I can come down from there and you'll see it snaps. As I come down, it snaps and it's highlighting the edge of that circle, which means it's going to be concentric. And if you look to the bottom right of the cursor, I'll just move the cursor so you can see it. As I get there, you can see there's a little icon of a circle inside a circle showing me that that's concentric. I'm going to left click and I'm just going to drag out a circle. Now, I could mirror this circle once I've got it the right size over to the other side as well. Um, but let's just repeat that, that process. If I hover over here, come down, it picks up the fact that I'm concentric, left click to place the center, left click to create the diameter. Uh, let's dimension it. In fact, let's dimension one. That needs to be 67 millimeters. And the other one wants to be the same. I could dimension that again, but let's use the equals uh, constraint again if you're on a smaller screen you may find that the constraints are hidden under each other under a, under an arrow uh, so I'm going to use equals I'm going to left click on that circle left click on that circle and that uh, makes sure that this one is the same size as that one that just saves us a bit of time if we have to redesign the speakers because perhaps we wanted to use some different speaker units that were a bit smaller or a bit bigger um, if I turn the constraint off, if I go over to the dimension, I can double click it and change it. So say we're using some speakers with a 50 millimeter diameter, I can change one to 50 millimeters and both change at the same time. Let's go back and make that 67 again. Okay, so what we need to do here is just to cut through on the face plate, we don't want to cut through to the back. So click on extrude. It wants to add a material. We want to change that from add to remove. And we could leave that as um, the default of 25 because that won't go all the way through. Uh, but we know that that um, surface is six millimeters. We could change that to six, but actually let's change the end condition. So let's left click on blind and change it up to next. So it'll just go to the next face and you can see that with our preview, it's just cutting through that six millimeter thickness. Left click to confirm that and right click to go to isometric and there's our isometric drawing or our isometric model of the oval speaker. Remember, uh, this is saving as we go along because it's cloud based. Let's create a drawing of that one so that we could do some practice renders. So left click on the plus sign, left click create drawing custom template we're going to go for ISO leave it at A4 leave everything else there go OK it will create our drawing now I don't think this one's going to quite fit in uh, full size on our on our page uh, we're in a part studio it's part one we want to create the drawing for let's change it from a front view to an isometric view it's thinking one third scale I think uh, we can probably get away with half scale. Let's try one to one, see if that's going to fit. Oh, that'll just about fit for us. Let's go for that. Left click, it creates the drawing and we can then print that out to do some practice renders of different case designs. Thank you for watching the tutorial. 
I'll see you in the next one.